Today I'm going to be sharing tips on how to get the most from your Inktense pencils and blocks for realistic artwork. I'm a huge fan of Inktense, so much so that my artwork is on the cover of both the blocks and the pencils. So if you were to buy these, you've got some of my art there. Kind of cool. Little side story there. Anyway, moving on to the tips. My first tip with working with these, I like to use the ink tense blocks, especially for my base layers, much like I would pan watercolors. I'm just taking a paintbrush with some water, getting some of that pigment on there, and then I can paint that directly to the paper and it comes out so smooth. You don't end up with that more grainy gritty look that you're prone to if you were to take the block like this and scribble directly onto the paper. And when you shade this way, it does blend out. And it blends out fairly well, but you do end up with some of that dotting where it looks very gritty. Now, there are times where you want a more gritty look. So it's not that that's always a bad thing, but when you're going for a more smooth coat, like I typically do, especially for my base layers, you can really see as we zoom in here, see the, the gritty little dots? When you apply the block or the pencil directly to the paper, you're more prone to have those bits that don't blend out all the way. The other thing is that if you shade them this way, if you were to put another layer, that some of that may reactivate because it wasn't really blended out all the way. So in order to avoid that where the, the ink is very permanent, it's not lifting, I like to mix it on a separate piece of paper, or in this case, I'm using the pan themselves. You can get a, a palette would work. Anything like that you can use to mix your color before you paint onto the paper. Now here is where I've applied the pencil and you'll really see the same thing, where I get a bit more of that gritty look. It's not as much as it was with the block, depending on how much pressure you added. The harder you push, the more that pigment sticks and the more of that gritty look that you get. So just some things to be aware of. That is my first tip is I like to blend separately. So here I'm gonna show you with the pencil. If I didn't have the blocks, I only had the pencils, but I wanted to blend on a separate, you know, get that smooth finish. I can scribble on a scratch piece of paper like this, add some water the, to the brush, lift it onto the brush. Now I can paint with it and look how smooth that comes out versus where I had just sketched on the paper. And obviously you would use a scratch piece of paper for that. Another tool that you can use to get that look is to use a uh, the sand block. So we just scribble onto this and this is going to pick up even more of the ink from the pencil. More of that pigment, then I take my brush with some water, mix that on there, lift it, and I can paint directly onto the paper and I get this super, super smooth look. Now that's not to say that there aren't going to be times, and we're gonna see that when we get into the project, there are times where you will want to use the pencil or the block directly onto the paper. This is just one of many techniques you can use with these. My next tip is with the white ink tense block. These are not, the formula in the pencil is not exactly the same as the block. This is going to be much more opaque. When you use that block, when you, I'm going to mix it with water, just like I did with the other colors. Now it comes out looking fairly translucent. Watch as this dries, and you'll see this over some of the, the next couple of seconds here while we're working on some other stuff. You'll see that get really, really opaque. So when you add white where you're getting white highlights, or let's say you mess something up and you just need to cover it and then put more color on top, Keep in mind that white, when you mix it with the block like this and paint it on, it is going to dry really opaque. It almost looks translucent when you first put it on there. But like I said, as it dries, it gets super, super bold. If I find if I apply the white block to the paper itself, same with the white pencil, and then I blend out, it just stays more translucent. I get the best results mixing it like you just saw me do there separately and then painting it onto wherever I needed that highlight. Now, the next tip I wanna give you is when you want your colors to be lighter, you may think, okay, I'm gonna take this purple and I'm just gonna mix it in with the white. Now, when you do that, what you're going to do is create a little bit more of a foggy color. Your color's not gonna be as rich as it would if you had just let the white of your paper show through. So you'll see as I mix my color here, let's add a little bit more white. So you can mix the colors, which is great. You don't need the full set. I love the full set, but you can get away with less colors and still be able to blend that out nicely or mix a lot of colors. But look, as I put this on here, I just get more of a pastel lavender color. It's not a really rich purple. If I wanted that same purpley violet, I don't know what the actual color I'm using here. If I wanted that to be really rich, what I wanna do is just use more water more water and let the white of the paper show through and I'm gonna get bit better pigmentation that doesn't have that more cloudy, foggy pastel color I got when I mixed the white with it. The more water you add, the lighter that will be. 
So as I add a bit more pigment, I'll get a bit darker and darker, but this gives you a very, very different look than what you would get if you just mixed white in with that to lighten it. So ideally, when you want your colors to be lighter, work over the light of the, the paper, or the white of the paper, and add more water to get that lighter effect. Now, what if you messed up and you made something really dark and you wanted it to be that lighter color? Let's say you were working over green and you wanted a lighter lavender. Paint, let it, let the green dry, paint the white like we just did, let that dry, and then you can put your lavender back over that and you're gonna get a more pure color again. My next tip, use a water-soluble graphite pencil to draw your artwork. That way, as you're blending other color on top, your graphite lines aren't going to show through. They're just gonna mix in with the ink tint. So you have this very, very clean finished work. If you use a regular graphite pencil, it's not always going to blend out when you put other color on top. So water-soluble graphite is my number four tip. My next tip with ink tents is because they do dry permanent, I can get away with going through here and adding more of my lining. So I'm doing a lot of the black areas, the black feathers that I want on the owl first. When I start blending other color, I can blend right on top of this and this color that I'm putting on here is going to stay put. Now, that's this is an important point. If I had done this with the black ink tense pencil, just shaded that in with a pencil or shaded in with the block directly to the paper, reactivating that with water, it would blend out and this stage would look very similar. The problem would be in that case, when I went to blend color on top, the areas where I applied the pencil directly to the paper would sort of reactivate and I would get black smudging in with my lighter golds and brown tones. So this is why it's so important to have painted this on separate. I mixed from like I would with a watercolor pan, I mixed my black on a separate in a separate area just with water so that it was mixed out and, and the pigment was very well dissolved. What happens when I take the pencil or the block to the paper is it doesn't dissolve all the way when I put the water on top. Little chunks of it will, will kind of reactivate when I put another layer on top of that. But here, because I've already dissolved everything perfectly, when I blend the other colors on top, there will be very little, if any, of the black smudging into those other colors but it really depends on how well you've gotten that dissolved. And then of course, make sure that this layer is completely dry before you put other layers on top. Now for the paper, I am using Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. Any mixed media or hot press type watercolor paper I find works really, really well. Pretty much anything you like with watercolors, you're probably going to like with ink tents. But ink tents can also be painted on fabric. I've not done that myself, so I'm not sure if I would enjoy it or not, but. I know on all of the watercolor papers and mixed media paper, it works great. Tip number six, test your color on a scratch piece of paper because what the block or even the pencil in some case looks like is not what it comes out looking like on the paper. They usually look really dark in before you mix the water in with them. So I always have this scratch piece of paper to test out which colors that I'm going to go with. Notice that I had some feathers off to the side of the head there that I didn't fill in with black. Because I used the water-soluble graphite, it's gonna blend right out. That shows you right there how great that water-soluble graphite is. If it was a regular graphite pencil, I would have needed to make sure it was erased all the way. So I am painting on here. Now I am painting upright at an easel just because that's all my back and neck will allow, but it works better if you do paint flat. You can see where my color is starting to run. Now tip number seven is make sure when you want something really smooth like this, don't let it start to dry because those brush strokes, once they dry, you're going to still see those brush strokes. Here, I wanted something very, very smooth. So it was important for me to make sure this stays wet. I am using a fine mist sprayer. I'll have a link in the video description for the supplies that I'm using and a blush brush. This is actually a makeup brush that I just use for painting. And I kept all of that wet and now I'm gonna go through and just really softly, and I am barely letting the bristles of that brush touch, but I'm softly going over this. Like I said, it has to stay wet. That is so important. Once this starts to dry, if you have harsh brush strokes, they're going to stay there. There's, this isn't like watercolor where if you get a harsh brush stroke, you can just go over it with water and it will reactivate and you can smooth it out. With this, once that dries, it stays put. And I'm going to do this in several layers. That brings me on to tip number eight is that we are going to do this in many layers. Your first several layers may look a bit dull and you can see as we dry this, it gets very, very, it has a very matte finish and the lights over my easel are overexposing this like crazy. So it looks even lighter. But when it gets light like that, dry it and do another layer over it. Now the benefit of doing an additional layer, let's say you had some harsh brush strokes that you didn't love. When you do more layers over that, while you'll still see some of those brush strokes, they'll get less and less obvious. They will start to tone down the more layers you do like this. 
Now with this, you can do as many layers as you want. There is no, no point where it just won't take more layers. You just let it dry and paint back over it as needed. If you are watching this and wishing you could watch this in real time, I do have my Patreon art lessons. For as little as $4 a month, you get access, instant access, to all of my longer tutorials. I have a library that I've been building for you for seven years. You get so much content instantly. There are over 300, even though the videos, the screen says 200. There's actually over 300 at this point, videos in multiple mediums for you to follow along with there. I've also started adding step-by-step -step downloadable images so you can make sure as you're following along, you have reached the same stage of your artwork where I am at that point. So that makes it even easier for you to follow these lessons. Head over to patreon.com slash lockree if you want to sign up or over to lockree.com just to find out more information and to see my, my Patreon video library. Back to this guy, I'm going to start layering brown on top of this and I'm just going right over the black. Now you can be more refined in how you shade each individual feather, but this was one of my beginner Patreon lessons for ink tents. Yes, I'm not kidding you. This is something that beginners can do. So it is, I'm keeping it more simplified in the way that I'm layering colors. My goal is to have a variation between some reddish browns, goldish browns, and the mid-tones. I want lots in there, a little bit of blue. Now I've got to make this look really ugly before I can make it look good. It looks like I painted it with my feet. What I'm doing is making everything very dark so that I can now, once that's dry, I'm going over it with my pencils. And when I use the Inktense pencils, I'm not usually going to blend all of it out with water. Normally when I do this, I will leave the pencil lines as is. Sometimes I'll blend it out a bit, but most of these are going to stay about how I'm applying them right now. You can see that white ink tense pencil, it's fairly opaque, but if I blend that with water, it almost disappears. Now, one of the mistakes I made here on his face, I should have gone darker so that the white feathers would show out up more. That's why later on, you'll see me go back through and darken it up even more than what I've got now. And then I have to go back through and put the white back on top of that. So by not going dark enough in the beginning, that did create a little bit more work for me, but it's not a big deal because I'll just keep layering until it looks good. Always remember when things are going not, well, let's just say questionable. They're questionable stages. When they don't look so hot, don't give up. You're just going to layer until it looks good. You will always have some of these very ugly stages. That's a normal part of art. Tip number nine is to use a black pencil over where you've used the black ink tense block. It will get so, so dark. If you're looking for that really, really dark, dark black, I find that painting it first with the black ink tense, let that dry. And that doesn't ever come out super, super dark for me, even when I do multiple layers. But when I go back over that, I'm burnishing, so I'm pushing pretty hard with this black ink tense pencil and look how dark that is. Plus it's great because I can then define the edges of my feathers a bit better where I'm getting that more frayed look that I wanted. So the black pencil over the black ink tense will give you the absolute darkest. And often if you see me work in colored pencils or other mediums, I'm often talking about using purples and magentas on top to get an, a richer black. I don't find I need to do that with these. I find that just the ink tense black pencil over the black ink tense block comes out really dark. It has so much pretty depth there. My last tip, tip number 10, is that the ink tense pencils besides the white, the white you can see is fairly opaque, that shows up well, but let's say you wanted a light pink or a light blue. The ink tense pencils, when you apply them to the paper, will almost always go darker. You're not gonna get a light color that really shows up well. So keep that in mind. Ink tense pencils are going to generally darken up whatever you're, wherever you're applying them. So let's say I wanted a light blue or a light pink, and you're gonna see me do this here in just a moment with the light blue ink tense block where I wanted this bright highlight around the owl. I've got a couple ways I can do that. One, I could paint it white first, like we did earlier with that ink tense block. That was our number two tip, I believe. We could paint it white, let it dry, and then put the blue pencil or a pink pencil or whatever color you want on top. That would allow it to show up. And you can see I'm painting the white here. Look how opaque this is going to dry. But the other way I can go is what I'm going to do is take a piece of my ink tense block, just a little chunk of that and I will draw directly on the paper. I'm not going to blend it out with water or anything, but that blue, once I get to this stage, it stands out so much. It's really opaque, but the pencils, not opaque at all besides that white. The pencil's generally going to make everything darker. So 
I'm using a rake brush here to get some frayed edges on those feathers. And look how I just work back and forth until I get it where I want it. Now you, you could potentially use colored pencil, and I've done it a couple of times over the ink tents for brighter areas. It's not the most effective though. The problem with the, the colored pencils, like the wax and oil-based colored pencils, they don't stick real well to the ink tents. Like they stick great to watercolor. Not so much with the ink tents. I'm not sure what it is about the texture. I've just not had great results with colored pencil really sticking. A higher wax content pencil tends to stick better than an oil-based, but I've, I've not had the best results, so I don't normally do that. But if you are going to use your wax or oil-based colored pencils mixed with ink tents, you want to put the ink tents down first because that's a water-soluble paint or ink in this case, and then your wax and oil-based colored pencils on top of that after. If you put ink tents on top of your wax or water-based colors, they may not last long term. Now here's where I'm taking a chunk of the ink tense block and I'm just going around my edges where I wanted some of those highlights. And this is where I was talking about earlier. You can see how, see how it's really, really opaque. I don't wanna blend that out with water. That will make it, they'll just kind of disappear. It'll tint the color, but it wouldn't be as opaque as what it is now. So anywhere where I've outlined that, generally going to lead it. Now, whenever I'm using the ink tense blocks, I'm typically, or if I'm applying it to the paper, I'm typically going to break those into smaller chunks. If you try to use the entire stick, it's just gonna snap on you. They're very, very brittle. So I just break it into a tiny little chunk and then apply, draw it on that way. So if you get a set of, of pencils through the mail, or not pencils, the blocks through the mail, and you've got some of those are broken, don't worry. Like I wouldn't go through the trouble of sending that back and having it replaced. Now, if they're all crumbled and they're all completely broken, then that's definitely have the company, wherever you bought it, replace that. But if a few of those are snapped in half, you are probably going to do that or snap them even in smaller pieces anyway. So for me, I'm not gonna worry about a few of those being broken because I'm gonna break them on purpose on my own. And for me, if I'm going to hang this or give it to somebody, I'm going to put it behind UV glass and use a UV protecting spray over it. A lot of these colors are not light fast. And I'm a stickler for light fast colors. That also may be the first time in my life I've ever used the word stickler. But I am, I'm, I'm very picky about things being light fast. I'm not gonna sell something that has the potential to fade on the customer over the next several years. But I still really love working in ink tents because they are such a fast medium. I can get something done with ink tents in a single night that might take me three weeks to get the same amount of color saturation and colored pencil. So it's a very, very fast medium. So if I wanted to illustrate a book or something like that, I think this is a great choice. Or if I wanna make prints, it's it dries matte, so it photographs really, really well for prints. This will be a Patreon postcard coming up here soon. And the other thing is because it is such a fast medium to work in, it's just enjoyable. So where I am very, very picky, I will not work with colored pencils, for example. Not that colored pencils aren't enjoyable, but they're, they're a slow medium. Uh, if I'm going to put weeks of work into a colored pencil piece, I better be able to sell it. With this, I can do it so quickly. I am okay with just selling prints so that I can still have the fun of having something done. It's almost that instant gratification. You get stuff done in ink tents so quickly. So I have one last bonus tip for you. I mentioned earlier that this is for a beginner ink tense Patreon lesson. And I know it doesn't necessarily look beginner because look at all that detail. It looks so tedious. There's a lot of detail in there. Detail's not hard to do. If you take your time and really look at your reference photo, putting in this level of detail is easier to make this look good than something that was very simple. Let's say I went with a I don't know, a solid colored fish. It's harder to make that solid colored fish look good than something like this with tons of little detail. Because here, I can be messy. I don't have to have perfect blending. There's so much busyness going on that you don't even notice all of the screw ups. So a beginner is going to have an easier time if they're willing to put in the time it takes to do all that little detail. It's going to, their end painting will look better than something that seemed like it would be very, very simple. So don't be hesitant to try something that is very detailed thinking that it's too hard. Detail does not equal hard. It just means you're gonna spend a bit more time doing that detail, but it really is a lot easier to make it, the end result look good. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube may or may not let you know when I have new content go live. So also click on the bell notification icon to be notified when I do have new videos. I have new content every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday.